You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. you. Here, Rob, I, I know you're. I know you're hungry. Mm. Hook me up with some charky. Can you just say charky? Charky, charky. I'm telling you, all I need is some eggs. And this? <laughs> really? I'll eat anything with this. <laughs> really? Mm. Well, guys, you heard it firsthand. Oh, good. If you like savory, if you like sweet, if you like lamb because it's higher in protein than beef, or maybe the fact that you want non GMO stuff, or maybe you like all natural. Well, the guys behind Charky wanted something that they could guarantee was all natural because they had a family friend who could only have certain types of food. Some of you may have a gluten allergy. Some of you may have some diet restrictions. Well, the guys behind Charky wanted to create something from scratch that was delicious, healthy, and would curb your hunger. That's why they came up with Charky, which is actually a Peruvian Incan way to say jerky. It's the original way to make jerky. So no chemicals, it tastes great, and you've got to check it out yourself. Go to charky.love and get yours from Amazon today. I promise you it is so worth it. You've got to check it out. Charky, that's C-H-A-R-K-I dot love. L-O-V-E. Yeah. Right. Just not, type, not L-U-V, because I know some people might think that's that. That's true. Yeah. Just go in your browser and people are like, you can even type that in. Yes. Charky.love. Check it out. Get yours today. I promise you'll like it. If you don't like it, go to Ask Drone You and tell me that you don't like it. And I will play it on the show because I don't believe anyone will not like it. It's, no, it's that fantastic good. stuff. It's healthy. Lots of protein. Not a lot of calories. Not a ton of sugar. It's filling. Mm-hmm. It actually fills you up pretty quickly. It's a it's a fantastic snack did you know they actually grow the barley grass that they feed the sheep so it's a hundred percent all natural like they hydroponically grow the feed that they give yeah. to create like no. it's amazing anyway it's legit anyway guys welcome to another awesome episode of ask a drone you my name is paul and my name is rob and you're listening to episode number 520 thanks guys for hanging out with us hope you're off to a great start Definitely hope you are off to a good start. And today we're going to be talking about where the FAA has jurisdiction and where they don't have jurisdiction. Some of you might be thinking, there's a place where they don't? Let's ask the question. (laughs) Let's go there. Play the question, Mr. DJ. (laughs) Hi, Paul and Rob. I enjoy listening to the podcast. I've learned a lot of things. And I'm a member at Drone U. Got a question for you. I was watching your episode on legal issues to touch on when presenting to real estate agents. And the example was given about a drone flying into a homeowner while you're shooting a real estate video. The question is, is if you're flying inside, such as maybe a barn or cathedral ceiling and have an, uh, an incident like you're speaking, does the FAA have any jurisdiction since you're indoors? So the prerequisite for the insurance to be following FAA rules for you to be insured, does it really apply? Thank you very much. So he said the FAA requirement for insurance. Did I hear that correctly? I think he was saying the insurance is requirement that you adhere to FAA rules. Okay, good. Because I want to clarify to everyone that the FAA does not require insurance. Let me say that one more time. The FAA does not require insurance. Does that make sense? Well, no, but you know, Hey, whatever. It does. And I think they're just saying that's not their purview. Um, if somebody wants to go get insurance, they obviously should. Yeah. They have enough to deal with, but I guess they could have thrown it in there, but, um, anyways, they didn't. That's all I hear is. (laughs) So, um, all I gotta say is, um, no, no. In fact, I recently had a conversation over my local FISDO, which those of you don't know, that's flight standards district office. That's the FAA's enforcement arm. And, um, it's funny because we were talking about flying over someone's house and he's like, uh, we were talking about homeowners rights to airspace. He's like, homeowners don't have rights to airspace. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, they do. Um, They don't have privacy rights, but 
which is a huge misconception in the, in the United States, but they definitely do have rights to the airspace. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they couldn't grow trees there. And he looked at me like, huh, <laughs> never thought about that before, <laughs> that trees use the air. Indeed, <laughs> it, they do. It, they, well, in order to grow up, they've got to have some space to go. And I said, look, you got to check out this case, Cosby versus the United States. This is what it says. This is what happens. This is why homeowners do have rights to the airspace. How high? That was never defined. Mm. It was the usable rights of the airspace. So we define that as the tip tops of the trees. That's what we say at at we we at drone you. But I had to explain this to him because Mm -hmm. he was like, "Well, you know, the FAA owns the air from the ground, you know, up," and I'm like, uh, "Like, not really, because how are you going to fly an airplane between the trees in someone's backyard? You know, that's not navigable airspace." So there's a problem if that's happening. Oh yeah, an argument that's made at the very beginning of drone days was that you know what is really navigable airspace. If a drone is flying here, can another plane or helicopter really get there? You know, is it really navigable airspace? So people have made that argument. We're not making that argument right now. I'm not saying anything about that. I'm not making an opinion on that. I think it is a valid argument um, in cities and in congested areas, but that's just me. Uh, that being said, mm-hmm. the FAA, when you are indoors, has zero. Let me repeat that. None, nil, nada, zip, zero, Absolutely nothing, a value of zero authority over the airspace inside of anything. So can let's so what if you have like a big horse arena and all it is is a like a metal roof, but the sides are open? Would that be FAA? I would say no. I would say no. But I don't know. Again, this is one of those like hairy and up to interpretation. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, the whole, this whole goes back to whole, you know, Ted's whole thing where yeah. you're going to get pulled over by a cop. If you're going to be nice, chances are you may not get a ticket. Well, and if I, you're going to be a d- you're going to get a ticket and then some. Yeah, but I don't ask that to be facetious. I ask that because I could actually see somebody at a ranch or something flying. And I don't know, the FAA shows up whatever maybe they get reported or something and you're underneath that roof here's the recent example that was given when people made something like this and the debate just goes on and on and on and on right houston stadium Mm -hmm. nrg stadium Mm -hmm. super bowl what if the stadium is closed and Mm. it's not open then it's indoors yes I, i think that would be pretty clear i think it's clear as well huh isn't that funny? Yeah. Think about that. I mean, you literally are going in and out of jurisdiction oh, yeah. simply by opening and closing. Oh, the yeah. And like Makes this, sense, though. And this was funny because Michael Chambliss, who uh, is one of the un- union uh, guys, the cinematographer 600 Guild or whatever it is, and I'm in Santa Fe Studios flying something for a demonstration. He's like, you're flying too close to people. You're flying here. You're flying there. You can't do that. And I said... You know what, sir? You can shut your mouth because <laughs> there is no authority for you to tell me anything right now. And we are not a navigable airspace. So seriously, shut it. Like, I don't want to hear it. And the guy looked at me like, I can't believe this young kid just said this to me. And I'm like literally staring him in the eye like, oh, not only did I said it, but I'm standing here looking at you like a gorilla. Like, what the hell are you going to do about it? <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs> so, <laughs> Paul's getting a little worked up here. <laughs> Sorry. I hate the unions. I just hate them. And, uh, you know, I recently did um, a regression analysis on whether union pilots, drone pilots get paid more than non-union pilots and they don't but then someone uh with the last name of fortin was like yeah but what about the health insurance what about the benefits from the union and i was like ah, oh, well didn't price that in there but that's a very valid valid point that is a valid point and if- that's really difficult to get as a small business owner it is. Especially yeah, in today's I, day and age, but that's thanks to the Democrats, so I don't know what to say about I that. I have a related appointment later this morning, and I'm not very excited about it. So yeah, you're hitting a sore spot there, Paul. Let's move on from that. And okay. unions. So the bottom line, though, here is totally hypothetical. This would never happen. But if you're a person who is going to only do indoor stuff, you would not need a 107. I mean, that's how that, clear yeah. it is that... There'd be no jurisdiction there on the FAA's yes, part. Yes, but as soon as but you, obviously that's not going to happen. As so. soon as you go outside, then it's just, then then, then you're screwed. Yep. So anyway, but interesting. I'm All glad right. that was a good. I love these questions where it's like these little super deep dives, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's not much information. But anyway, guys, if you have a question, a clarification point, or an opinion, go to askdroneu.com and upload it so we can answer your question. 
or give a statement on your opinion, <laughs> whatever that is, uh, go to askdroney.com and upload it. Again, guys, thank you so much for the reviews. We really do appreciate all of the love and support you give us because we're about expanding this industry and maintaining the freedoms to fly. And we couldn't do that without you. So thank you very much. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And that is, this is, that is, this is we Ask are. Drone You. <laughs>